Hello, my name is Lowell Vanderpool and this channel is dedicated to IT students, IT professionals, and anyone who enjoys learning technical subjects. We have been looking at containers, specifically Windows containers, and now we're going to shift from general information about Windows containers. We're going to look at Windows 10 and Docker containers. So Mr. Vanderpool, I want to install Docker Desktop for Windows. Well, first you go to your Windows feature and you enable Hyper-V and you enable containers. You're going to type in at Google Docker Desktop for Windows. It'll take you right to a download link. It's wise to go ahead and create a Docker account. It's free. Make sure you install it with admin rights. As you're doing your install, it will prompt you automatically for the Windows subsystem for Linux. You will see a menu option like this. Now, if you only want to work with Windows containers, you can uncheck the Windows subsystem for Linux, and you can work just for Windows containers. Then Dockers will begin the installation, and it will ask you to close and restart. Now, you're not done because once it pops back up, you'll get a prompt for a update on the WSL. Go ahead and click the link and it will download and install and you'll restart. When you're all done, you'll have what you see here, a, a Docker dashboard. On your Docker dashboard, go ahead and sign in with your Docker ID that you created back in the very beginning when I said create a free account. Now, once Docker is installed, it's going to create a desktop icon. It's also going to put a Docker icon in your system tray. So let's drive around. First of all, see the green Docker down here? That tells me my Docker engine is working. So the basic fundamental service that runs this is, is off and running. Also, I'm going to go to my system tray and I'm going to right mouse click on the Docker icon. Here's where you can see I can restart that Docker service. I can see that I'm logged on and I have a free plan. A Docker Hub, if I want to go to my Docker Hub, a quick start guide, documentation, a lot of cool stuff here. Here's where I can switch from Windows containers to Linux containers. Just hit the button and voila, we're ready to download Linux. Pretty cool. I've got some troubleshooting, check for updates. So just don't forget this. This is really, really handy. Now the dashboard allows you access to your images and your containers. But what if I need to start pulling down images from the Docker Hub system? Well, one, make sure you're logged on. Log on to your Docker, your desktop Docker, and that connects you automatically to the Docker Hub, which is a cloud that allows you to pull your images down. To get started, let's start with command line. I'm going to go ahead and run command line and run as an administrator. And I'm going to go ahead and pull this down. Now, command line, I'm just at a system prompt, but the, the power of this, if I want to access the Docker runtime service, then I simply type Docker and immediately I'm going to be launching the Docker runtime. So I'm going to do Docker search and I'm going to look for a Windows Server Core, any image up there that fits that description. And it's going to search and you can see it's found a whole bunch of different Windows Server Core, and you can see it gives description. You can decide what you want to do. I'm going to pick one and download it so you can see. I'm going to choose Bowwolf Windows Server Core with IIS, and I'm going to paste all that down. And it's going to be pulling all of that image from the Docker Hub down, and you can see here we go. It's downloading all the components of his version of Windows Server Core with IIS. And the download is complete. We're just gonna let it download and you can see it's probably about a 10 gig image. So we're just gonna have to give time. Video Magic is going to keep you from having to watch a boring download. So I've went to my interface and I've clicked on images and now you can see there's my Windows Server Core with IIS. There's a couple things I can do. One, I can come over here to the three dots I can inspect it, pull it, push it to hub, or remove it. So you can get rid of it if you want to. I can also go ahead and run that server core. Let's go ahead and do that. Remember, we don't have a container without an operating system. So we're going to go ahead and run, hit the run, and it takes it a while to run. 
We're going to say OK, and we should see a container pop up. I'm going to go back to images, and I'm going to wait for in use. There's going to see a little icon pop up here, and it'll say in use. So we'll wait for that to happen, and then we'll just click on that in use. And there's our container. Now, if I want to get inside that container at the command prompt, very easy. Hover over the container. Notice I'm at that apps and container option. I'm going to come over here and there's a little command line. And voila, I'm inside the container of that server core and I can type IP config and I can look and there's my subnet. I'm 172.18.15.125. Right away, I'm on the network and if I want to ping www.microsoft.com. You can see I'm on the network with that. Notice I did not log on to that server. That's pretty wild. Okay, so just be aware that that Windows Server Core is running, no log on, and it's on the network.